chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, since Mashiach suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind, because he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That is an important verse, and let's check this too. Romans 6, well, that's a lot. Uh, 1 Peter 2.25, we already read that one, <laughs> but still, let's do it. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your beings. We read that earlier. And the other one was Romans 6, 2 to 22. I don't think I'll read the whole thing, but what then shall we say? Shall we continue in sin to let favor increase? Which is pretty much the conclusion to which a lot of people get because of the false doctrine of saved always saved or saved by grace not understanding that faith without works is um dead so then it says let it not be how shall we how shall we who died to sin still live in it how shall we who died to sin through the immersion through being in mashiach still live in it or do you not know that as many of us as were immersed into Mashiach, Yahushua were immersed into his death? This is huge because this verse should show mo most people who don't understand it, of course, um, how the immersion in water is a representation of the immersion in Mashiach. It's just a representation of something that must happen spiritually and not necessarily immediately in the moment when they are immersed in water it could happen before it could happen after depending on the mindset of the person of the un on the understanding on their belief or do you not know that as many of us as were immersed into mashiach yahushua it doesn't say into water it says into mashiach yahushua were immersed into his death so by being immersed in him, the idea of being immersed in him was to die like he died. So that we die through him, but continue to live for him. We were, well, I said I was not going to continue to read. I think hopefully that's enough. <laughs> so I'll go back to Peter. Therefore, since Mashiach suffered in the flesh, arm, yourself, arm yourselves also with the same mind. Right? We have to be of one mind like-minded like we saw in the previous chapter because he who has suffered in the flesh has sin has ceased from sin remember that once a person dies since the wages of sin is death when a person dies then sin is paid for that's why when we die in mashiach our sins have been paid for but a person who is dead to sin, uh, dead to sin, cannot sin. Right? Uh, a person who has died cannot go uh, to fornicate, for instance. So, a person who is um, dead to sin will not be able to sin. Because he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Also in the sense of suffering, how it rectifies what sin has uh, broken. So that he no longer lives the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of men, but according to the desire of Yahweh. So when a person has been immersed into Mashiach, I'll go back. He who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, so that he no longer lives the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of men. So, once we are immersed, the idea is for you not to live like you used to, only for the flesh, only for the lusts of men, what the flesh wants, but according to the desire of Yahweh. So, we seek to fulfill the will of Yahweh. For we have spent enough of our past life, lifetime in doing the desire of the nations. Right? 
we have done like it even if it was just for 10 years that's enough time doing what's not supposed to be done for we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the desire the desire of the nations right what the pagan nations want what the enemy wants what society promotes having walked in indecencies lusts drunkenness orgies wild parties and abominable idolatries right that is what the nations want what they seek they promote and many people end up being prey to that until becoming slaves through sin for we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the desire of the nations having walked in the indecencies lust drunkenness orgies wild parties and abominable idolatries in which they are surprised that you do not run with them in the same flood of loose behavior blaspheming right so they the people of the world they are surprised when you don't want to worship the idols when you reject them they hate you when you show them that they are only demons or even that they are just matter when we tell them that they are abominable we become abominable to them when we do do not want to be part of wild parties when we reject to go to a wild party because of what may happen there and we do not want to be a part of it they think we are crazy for not wanting to be part of it because their flesh pretty much forces them to do so to want it so how could anybody not want it as much as they do as well as orgies drunkenness lusts and decencies in which they are surprised that you do not run with them in the same flood of loose behavior you see how it says same flood because they will go with the coming flood of fire just like there was a flood of water because of the same behavior in which they are surprised that you do not run with them in the same flood of loose behavior blaspheming who shall give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead they all will have to give an account about what they did and why they did it to him who made them him who is ready to judge the living and the dead for this reason the good news was also brought to the to those who are dead this is huge because prophets came before mashiach they died many people came and heard the prophets and expected the coming of mashiach and they died so when mashiach died he went to them so that he could be the sovereign the adon of the living and the dead that's why he had to die to be king over all realities even that of the dead so he went and told them i came i saw a conquered <laughs> he went to paradise and told everybody that he had fulfilled the prophecies just like he told the spirits in prison for this reason the good news well i guess i should say were also brought to those who were who are dead for this reason the good news were also brought to those who are dead so that whereas they are judged according to men in the flesh they might live according to yahweh in the spirit so whereas they are judged according to men in the flesh reason why they might have been killed and therefore in sheol they might live according to Yahweh in the spirit for they believed in Mashiach and they were just waiting for him to free them from Sheol but the end of all has drawn near amazing that this was said so long ago so imagine how close we are people have no idea how close we are even those who are expecting it and I mean, in, in what, well, I mean many things, but one of them, like even when I think about it myself, 
who have been waiting for everything to begin for years since I have been waiting for years I don't mean for the number but for many years um, is like I have realized how fast it will be once it begins because three and a half years have gone by several times already since I've been waiting and that has shown me how fast three and a half years go by which is the time that the two witnesses will preach before the seven trumpets. But the end of all has drawn near. Therefore, be sober-minded and be attentive in the prayers. Attentive in the prayers. And above all, have fervent love for one another. You see how this is so, so important that is said everywhere. And Yahushua said that this is the second commandment in importance. After loving Yahweh, for we would not be able to love anybody if we didn't love Yahweh, who is love. So, it's so important because the true congregation of Revelation Philadelphia is the congregation of brotherly love. Thankfully, that is something that we have a lot of in this congregation, so I'm very happy for that, and I'm sure Yahweh is as well. Um... Yet, there are people who have come through the congregation who have not shown this love. And it's sad because they might think they have love for they know the verses, they know the commandments. But it's hard for them to show that love for whatever. Uh, I mean, there are many reasons why somebody has issues showing love. But the, the main, uh, main problem, I believe, is when people... Um, well, you know how this society puts so many barriers between people because of color, because of money or lack of it, because of certain type of jobs or because of um, what they say, class or whatever. Um, and they don't understand that that happens because of lack of love. It's as if you don't have enough love so you only can give to some who are who you think are better than others and therefore you're showing that you don't actually have love something else um, desire perhaps for something that you can get from those whom you claim to love so sadly there are people who have been deceived and they don't know how to love others and in fact, that that lack of love for others makes them not understand it, understand them, nor sympathize with them, or empathize, and it becomes an issue. Because if they don't understand, then that brings division. And above all, have fervent love for one another. If we actually love one another, then we will work to understand him or her whoever she or he may be in the congregation instead of judging condemning because of something that is not understood because love covers a great number of sins when you really love you will forgive you will ignore uh, things that were done against you because of that love for that person. But many, instead of doing that, they do the opposite. Because they believe they are greater. They believe they are above. So they end up not only judging but condemning. And they don't cover their sins. Instead, they judge them for them. They condemn them for them. Yet love covers sins. So if a person acts that way, that person does not have love. That person is not acting according to what Yahweh is, but according to what the enemy is, an accuser who is looking for something to complain and destroy and everything else that is negative. Welcome one another without grumbling. Without grumbling. 
so important because the enemy will always try to put some grumbling in, in it. <laughs> Welcome one another without grumbling. Also, obviously, we should be always careful with how we act, how we approach others and everything so that we don't cause any grumbling that may be justified, <laughs> right? But we should always welcome one another happily, without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, as each one has received a gift, serve one another as good trustees of the manifold favor of Yahweh. We have all been given gifts in the Spirit. So through those gifts, we should serve one another. Because if it was given to us for free, then we should do for others things for free. If we received it as a gift, why would we never give gifts <laughs> or use that gift to give to others? Serve one another as good trustees, right? Yahweh trusted us with something, so we should take care of it use it correctly respectfully as each one has received a gift serve one another as good trustees of the manifold favor of Yahweh if anyone speaks let it be as the words of Yahweh this is huge that should make us think if anyone speaks, let it be as the words of Yahweh. So we should think, would Yahweh would, would Yahweh say something like this? Is this right? Is this true? If anyone speaks, let it be as the words of Yahweh. If anyone serves, let it be as with the strength which Yahweh provides. So that Yahweh might be praised in it all through Yahushua HaMashiach, to whom belong the steam and the rule forever and ever. Amen. Everything that we do, we got to do it according to Yahweh's will. Speak like Him, act like Him. Serve like Him, for He came to serve men by sending His Son to die for our sins. Beloved ones, do not be surprised at the fiery trial that is coming upon you to try you as though some unusual matter has befallen you this is amazing for several reasons and may Yahweh protect all of us because this has been very um, this idea has been very present in the last studies this uh, we have previous studies we've been talking about this a lot so may Yahweh protect us. Remember also that we have been reading Job. So that's key as well. And no matter how much I say it, how many times I say it and explain it, I have noticed that some don't get it. Um, and I notice it because then they tell me, well, yeah, they talk to me and they tell me their issues. And then I realize that they are not understanding this because I then have to repeat it. <laughs> Listen, beloved ones, do not be surprised at the fiery trial that is coming upon you. You see how he already spoke about the immersion in water through the representation of the flood. Then the immersion in spirit through mentioning that we must be immersed in Yahushua HaMashiach. And now he's talking about the immersion in fire. What they would say the baptism of fire. Remember that when they went to Yahuhanan, Yahuhanan said, I baptized you, I immersed you in water, but one is coming who will immerse you in spirit and in fire. The first, Yahushua, brought the spirit in Shavuot. The last brings the fire. But the fire is not only the revelation and understanding and wisdom that will come through the mouth of the prophet like Moshe, but also has to do with the trials that come to each person that believes. For you come to believe and you repent, so you go into the water because of repentance. That is the immersion of water. Then you come out to be immersed in the Ruach in order to have a good conscience before Yahweh. But then after that, you will be tested to see if it's true. 
that you are dead to what you used to be you are dead to um wicked thoughts wicked words wicked actions so you need to be tested to see if it's true what you said and that you have a good conscience and that you believe etc so do not be surprised we shouldn't be surprised that is important isn't not only telling us that this will happen but it's telling us you shouldn't be surprised it's just it is natural it is what comes next after you believe then tests that's why many people come to believe in Yahweh and then they are tested and they don't pass the test because they reject the belief once they have an issue because they think that the issue came because of the belief as if the belief was wrong and therefore the issue not understanding that the issue is a test to see if what you believe is uh, what you claim to believe is true i mean if it's true that you actually so the test must happen just like when a person goes to school it needs to be tested to see if he or she has learned so if we came to believe it because we learned that we need to believe we need forgiveness but we need to learn how to act and that's why we will be tested to see if we are acting correctly and if we are not the test itself should show us how to act what we should and should not do so beloved ones do not be surprised at the fiery trial the immersion in fire that is coming upon you to try you as though some unusual matter has befallen you is not unusual is actually what will happen is normal but as you share messiah's sufferings like when we suffer for whatever it may be we are sharing with mashiach because we are his body and you know his body was the one who suffered but as you share messiah's sufferings rejoice in order that you might rejoice exultingly at the revelation of his team so if we share with him the pain the suffering we will also share with him the honor and that is huge verse 14 if you are reproached listen to this important if you are reproached for the name of mashiach you are blessed and you guys know how christians who claim to believe in mashiach reproach us for believing in the name of mashiach which is amazing that they don't read and understand these verses that they claim to believe in the scriptures but they don't believe what they say and for those who have well who feel bad when this happens you shouldn't as he says here if you are reproached for the name of Mashiach, you are blessed. You should feel blessed. Because the Ruach of steam, the Ruach, the spirit of steam and of Yahweh rests upon you. This is a great verse to know, to understand that you have the Ruach. Because only through the Ruach will you actually believe in the true Messiah. Only the true, the true Ruach will teach you that Yahushua is the true Messiah and that that is his name. Because in fact the Ruach comes through his name from the Father. So if you are reproached because of his name, that means the Ruach is in you. In this case it says rests upon you. And we need to be, that would be like being immersed in the Ruach, for it is upon you, but we need to absorb everything from the Ruach. And Yahweh rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, right? When they blaspheme against the name, when they reproach us because of his name. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is praised by us taking whatever reproach we praise him because we show that his honor is more important than ours his honor is more important than life because he is the one who gives life and without him there is no life so what's the point of life i mean there wouldn't be any life without him 
For do not let any of you suffer as murderer or thief or doer of evil or as a meddler. Right? Nobody should suffer for any of this, right? Because it would be justifiable. If somebody murders somebody, that person should suffer. Somebody steals, that person should, su should suffer. Every doer of evil will and should suffer, etc. So, we shouldn't be suffering because of things that we did that, we, uh, that are evil, for which we would deserve that pain. But if anyone suffers being... This is a verse, this is one of the three verses where the, the word Christian appears in the New Covenant. Like I said, I, be, I do believe the New Covenant was written in Hebrew and then translated to Greek. It would be very enlightening to be able to have the Hebrew writings to see what exactly it said here. Because, for instance, you see how this translator says Messianist. Or, or those who believe in the Messiah, right? But the context of the word, I mean, of this verses where the word Christian appears seems to show something that may be different than those who believe in Messiah. And that is why some believe that the word Christian has actually a negative connotation, that it comes etymologically from Christin which means a dumb person in the context where we see the word Christian appearing for instance uh, there is one when Agrippa wanted to was about to believe and he told Paul you almost turned me into a Christian if Christian was a good thing then he would have had turned into a Christian, but by saying you almost turn me into a Christian is like saying you almost make me do something bad. You almost make me make a mistake. You almost make me a fool. The word Christian is said in scriptures in the other verse also. Uh, for like I said, there were three. I already mentioned one. This is the second one, the one we have in front. And then there's a third one. In that third one, which is actually the first one <laughs> of the three, is when they were called Christians for the first time and that happened amongst the pagans so it was the pagans the Gentiles who came up with the name not the believers that already seems suspicious because those who didn't believe actually would mock and blaspheme against what we believe they believe that uh, we are dumb for believing in the resurrection of the dead so they would tell um, they would use that term and perhaps even because of the closeness to uh, write to the word Christ or Christos in Greek um, but he was referring to the believers being dumb for believing that the dead will rise so that's why it was the pagans the unbelievers Gentiles who came up with the name to refer to us who believe in the resurrection if it was a good term then they would have believed those who started using it if it was a good term Agrippa would not have used it the way he used it and if it was a good term here in this context would not be next to murderer thief doer of evil or meddler so it is like saying that it is an insult that they were using, and not this, but Christian. It was an insult that they were using to refer to the believers. So, if they try to insult you with that name, with name calling, don't feel bad because it is not dumb, it is not evil to believe in the resurrection. So, but if one suffers being a Christian, being a, I will use believer, but I already explained what it is actually believed. Um, regarding that word let him not be ashamed right why if Christian was a good word with a good meaning why would anybody be ashamed for being called a Christian that would be an honor I hope I'm being understood please let me know in a comment <laughs>
It would be an honor if it was a good term. But here Peter is saying, if, don't get offended if they tell you this, if they call you this. Why would you get offended if it's something good? Obviously, it is because he was used to offend. Is the reason why he's saying, do not be ashamed. Do not worry. It's like scripture tells us that we are called crazy. That we are crazy to those who are uh, perishing. The good news are... Um, I'm missing the word at the moment. If I'm not mistaken, most translations have foolishness. Right? But they think we're crazy. Good news are foolishness to those who are perishing. So, because it says, but if one suffers being Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him esteem Yahweh in this matter. Because it is time for judgment to begin from the house of Yahweh. It is time for judgment to begin from the house of Yahweh. Just like we need to begin with ourselves and then with our house, where our home, and then the community, and then the world if possible. Everything has an order. Just like when Moshe didn't circumcise his first son, but when he was going to Egypt to bring the plagues over the Egyptians who were not circumcised, Yahweh almost killed him. So Sephora, his wife, had to circumcise his son and then he was ready to go to Egypt because he had to take care of his home first. Because it is time for judgment to begin from the house of Yahweh. And if firstly from us, what is the end of those who do not obey the good news of Yahweh? And if firstly for, from us, because we have been um, judge and pretty much we have been rectifying as a people as a nation throughout our well through all history as we see in the scriptures the nations they haven't they will pretty soon we were judged for almost 6,000 years and the pain that we should have felt was spread throughout those 6,000 years now the nations will be judged in very short span of time so their judgment will be great their pain will be great because it is time for judgment to begin from the house of yahweh and if firstly from us what is the end of those who do not obey the good news of yahweh and if the righteous one is scarcely saved where shall the wicked and the sinner appear and if the righteous one right if those who are righteous have to go through pain if the righteous one is uh, scarcely saved like barely saved where shall the wicked and the sinner appear right in judgment in hell in the lake of fire eventually so then those who suffer according to the desire of yahweh should commit their lives to a trustworthy creator in doing good. Once again, so then those who suffer according to the desire of Yahweh, which is pretty much what we have been seeing tonight, like yo, those who because of the perfect will of the Father accept going through pain, pretty much suffering because that is the desire of Yahweh and he knows why, should commit their lives to a trustworthy creator. He is trustworthy, so just trust that whatever is happening has a purpose. Trust, for He is trustworthy in doing good. We need to commit our lives in doing good, even if that brings anything bad, even if that causes anything, any suffering, any affliction. We need to continue to trust our Creator, for He has a perfect plan. And there is a reason for that desire from Yahweh. So I hope that's clear.